calling Liliana Carrillo. Welcome to Digitizer. You are a computer scientist, a researcher in collective intelligence, also a social and digital entrepreneur, and you have so many other interests. Maybe you can tell us more about it and present yourself in brief. Yeah. Well, uh, hi Tatiana, I'm very happy to be here. I, indeed, I have a lot of interests and uh, some are more social, some are more uh, like uh, digital, some other are more for business, so indeed I have a, a very varied profile. Um, but in general, I, I would say that uh, the topic that I like the most is actually collective intelligence and collective decision making. So, um, and I have learned from different backgrounds, like for example from education, democratic education, uh, from agile, uh, agile project management, uh, from democracy, uh, to actually, and swarm intelligence, intellig uh, artificial intelligence, to actually, um, based on all those things, build our collective intelligence. And speaking about um, collective intelligence, uh, so you work, you work on what is known as swarm intelligence that you can find in um, animal kingdom, like in ant colonies or beehives, and you apply it also to humans. Can you tell us a little bit more and why we can apply it to humans also? Yeah. Well, um, when I was doing my PhD in, uh, in computer networks, I applied algorithms of ant colony, ant colony optimization, so actually the intelligence of ants, to, um, to look for better, the better path to send our data in the network. So basically when we are downloading a website, uh, visiting a website on our computer, we are actually downloading information from a server somewhere in the world. But there, is, there are a lot of cables and communication systems that actually make it possible for this uh, data from that server to arrive to our computer, right? So basically, we, can, we create paths, right? An optimal path to uh, see our website or our information. Uh, basically, this is a collective goal. The collective goal that was designed for this algorithm was please find the best path for this data, right? Um, now, using the same systems of swarm intelligence, we could become the ants, right? So our brains collaborate uh, to, for example, decide something together, and then to optimize that path to the happiness of a group, for example. So we could actually decide and say to the algorithm, let's find a better path to hum for humanity to be in peace, for example. Very interesting and mm -hmm. it brings me to my uh, next question because you have a um, platform, Sovereign, and it's all about liquid uh, democracy and also collective voice, collective intelligence. Can you tell us more about this one? Yeah. So. I'm, uh, I'm a very proud uh, ambassador of the project democracy.earth and what we are basically trying to achieve is to build a borderless democratic system um, in a way that we, we can actually like um, get to solve really big problems in the world, big challenges that cannot be just solved by, by one government. For example, climate change is something that is not affecting only the Belgian government or the city of Brussels. It's actually something that is of a global, uh, the global level, right? So we are, um, we are indeed uh, uh, working with Sovereign. It's a tool that we could use already to decide in one-on-one -on -one, uh, basics. Uh, we could, for example, decide that I give you my vote mm -hmm. to uh, decide on, on how to uh, solve problems with artificial intelligence. Or for example, how to, uh, how to decide about ethics, mm -hmm. right? Uh, or how to decide about regulations and uh, for AI or for cryptocurrencies or, or so on, for technologies in general. So I could trust someone that I know who knows a lot about that mm -hmm. and who can take decisions for, for me, right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't necessarily need to go to a politician who I don't know, but I can just vote for a person who actually knows about the subject, right? 
and that person can delegate the vote to another one who at the end can be a politician, right? Or I can even decide, no, <laughs> I want to decide on this. I have pre prepared myself, for example, about uh, democracy, let's say, or about education. I want to choose about these subjects on my own. So this is a tool that can facilitate that, can facilitate that we delegate votes to each other, right? And that we are constantly deciding, that we can decide more constantly, not every four years, and that our vote is mm -hmm. kind of frozen, but that mm -hmm. we actually decide more uh, in regular basis. Um, but the problem of actual democracy right now, and that brings me to the topic of swarm intelligence, is that we have a lot of polarization. If you think, for example, about the referendum, the Colombian referendum for peace and Colombian, there was uh, the, the division almost in our country. About 50% of the population didn't want to sign the peace agreement and the other 50% wanted to sign the agreement. But if, if you would actually take that proposal in little pieces, you would actually realize that everyone wanted peace in Colombia. There was just one little piece about the land and who was going to own the land that was our actual problematic. Mm -hmm. So we could have actually like made that big proposal in little pieces, mm -hmm. uh, split it in little pieces and decide, oh man, we all want peace actually, <laughs> you know? And then go for, for one solution in one of the aspects that was mm -hmm. like, uh, like, um, like the trouble, let's say, of that referendum. And the same happens, uh, for example, with Brexit. Mm -hmm. It's also yeah. polarization. Mm -hmm. So then uh, the problem that I see with democracy, and I still see the bit with uh, liquid democracy, is that we, it's a system of voting. Mm -hmm. And when we vote, we can polarize, and we cannot really see the whole, mm -hmm. right? So then if we apply uh, like artificial intelligence to this kind of, mm -hmm. uh, kind of decision-making, we can actually try to align on one goal. Mm -hmm. Like, if you think again about the ants with the goal of please bring the food mm -hmm. back to the nest, or in computer, in a computer algorithm, please bring me this website to my computer, it's a specific goal. So if we would decide to make also an algorithm in that way, we could also actually like solve those polarization problems and say, Let's take a solution together. What is the possibility right now? What is the priority right now? And let's go step by step. Right. Very interesting. Thank mm -hmm. you, Liliana. And this year we conduct in um, a little survey comprising three questions that we will be asking um, all our guests. Um, and um, so the questions are like this. The first question is about the fact that Europe considered uh, to be way behind USA and China in terms of um, AI uh, race. And uh, according to you, how can Brussels and Europe contribute to AI development? Mm. It's a very good question, Tatiana. Yeah. Well, um, we are indeed very behind uh, in, in technology in general, in uh, comparison with the United States and with Asia in general, not only China, but for example also India and so on. Um, one thing that we have in our favor as Europeans, and I come actually from South America, so I can evaluate the, the cultural difference, difference, is that in Europe we have more unity. Somehow, like that is the meaning of the European Union. We were, in, 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 the, in history, we were actually uh, a continent with wars, you know? And the meaning of European Union, it's let's not have a war, let's be unified, let's make peace and let's make this work for everyone. So starting from that basic, th th that basic is, is, is very human. So, and, and you don't see it in many other countries or, or continents. So the, the, what I see is that the European Union in general and Brussels being the center or the capital of this European Union can play a role on supporting artificial intelligence and supporting that we create like platforms and also regulations in a way that 
we go forward as, as society and we transform things that can be transformed with artificial intelligence, but without damaging people, like still protect people. And that is something that is very, um, very beautiful in Europe. I, I have to say it's, uh, yeah. And how can you prevent uh, damaging people? <laughs> <laughs> when we speak about Brussels in Europe. That, what can be the tools in yeah. your opinion? Well, Brussels is uh, it's actually a source of, uh, of, um, of solutions, I would say, because there's a lot of diversity here in Brussels. Mm -hmm. You see people from all the continents, right? Mm -hmm. So if basically you could even at uh, Brussels level feed the algorithms with all the intelligence of different continents, that is already um, already providing some really diversity and less bias to the algorithms because that's actually the, the, the challenge in artificial intelligence that if you go into a bias then you put some danger, uh, you add danger to the systems, right? So, um, yeah, I... <laughs> and do you think that the uh, regulations on Brussels level and European level can help? I am very sure about it. Yeah, I'm very sure that uh, regulations um, can like support that that the humans are still respected. You know, like it can be, for example, that we have uh, taxes for artificial intelligence. So it's not that I, that we have to forbid artificial intelligence because it's a danger. No it actually provides a lot of solutions. For example, at medical level, we will have, we can support doctors to take better decisions, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of good in that, but there is also the danger that in the transition, because the transition is going, the digital transformation is going so fast that people, many people can be or behind that transformation or they can be out of their job because the job transforms so fast that it becomes more digital. So basically also the educational role, uh, the, the education will be also very, very important. Um, so yeah, education, finance, to guarantee that in the transformation, in this digital transformation, that people still have a salary. You know, that if people are going to, to lose their job, that mm -hmm. in any case, they can still live and be human, you know. Yeah. Liliana, uh, lately we hear a lot about the dangers of AI. As you see it, what positive changes can be brought by AI instead? Yeah, for example, uh, doctors. Like if we, if we go to a doctor, sometimes it feels like an experiment. Like we tell our symptoms and like, you know, you go to one doctor and the doctor says, okay, you maybe have this. The other doctor says something different, right? Because we have different fields and we are very focused on what we study. So if we could, for example, feed the algorithms with the intelligence of different doctors, we could have better uh, diagnosis uh, of our illnesses and therefore better treatment. Um, we could have, for example, with swarm intelligence, because I'm a fan of swarm intelligence, we could have uh, like little robots that collaborate and for example, in a disaster, uh, there could be one flying uh, that is seeing the image of what is happening and sending uh, images to the other ones to decide on what path to take uh, to rescue someone. So, you know, like Swarm Intelligence could also help in, in disasters. Uh, we could also with technology and um, not, I don't mean, I don't mean uh, only artificial intelligence, but we, with other kind of technology, uh, we could also support, uh, for example, having a guaranteed income for everyone and, and that everyone would feel uh, okay in the world and uh, that transformation. Um, we could, for example, even forget about, about our passports and even have uh, the identity of a person recognized in a different way, in a unique way that can be, oh, let's, uh, you know, record Liliana in this moment and she has an expression that is unique and that can show that Liliana is Liliana, right? Mm -hmm. And so we can transform also uh, the, um, yeah, uh, like for example, refugees. Refugees could, um, could uh, have uh, their identity registered in a digital way 
in a way that they don't need to go to their homeland, their home place, to show that they have a passport when they, it, there is a war, right? And we can transform education, we can transform social, uh, social sciences too, uh, we can transform democracy and the way we decide together. So we can decide to decide better for everyone. <laughs> Very good. And this year, uh, the summit edition is dedicated to the theme uh, being uh, human in the age of AI. And that brings me to my last question. Uh, what is the place of ethics in AI, in your opinion? And how can AI contribute to gender, racial equality and social justice? Well, I, I have to say that I'm very happy to see, um, to be part of this conference. And uh, I invite everyone to see the website and to visit the website and to see that there is a, bi a, a gender balance. So this is actually one way how this conference is contributing um, because it's the more diversity, so I don't mean only the balance between women and men, but even different ages and different backgrounds, you know, like also racial uh, inclusion, it means that the algorithms will be um, more intelligent and will have less of a, of a bias, like less of a, let's only collect the information of people working, for example. Then we forget about the people who are not working. Or let's collect only the information of people who are, uh, who are healthy, right? Then we forget, or the algorithms forget about the people who are not healthy, right? So then, um, the, um, the, the question of, uh, of uh, being human, uh, I feel very human at this conference. I feel welcome and uh, I love uh, seeing so many women in, in the conference. We have traditionally taken a caring role in life, um, taking care of children, taking care of uh, education, taking care of uh, people in hospitals and so on. That has been actually one of our main roles. Uh, traditionally and it is still like that so we can create artificial intelligence that is scary right so it's uh, it's beautiful and uh, talking about ethics well regulation we need um, we need to to sit down we need to um, to decide on how are we going to at European level uh, and even it's something that it's not only at European level, it's really at global level. How are we going to manage the ethics? Because the problem is that if we manage to solve ethics at European level, there is at global level in any case the competition, right? So let's say we put more taxes. What happens? That all the artificial intelligence just go to another country, right? Another continent. And then somehow we will still get the influence of all that movement. So it's something that it's not just about Europe, it's really about taking decisions at global level. Um, ethics, how are we going to manage uh, the digital transformation and how fast it is going? Mm -hmm. And we will hear more answers and more ideas uh, during the DS Summit. So thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Linana Carrillo, and looking forward to hearing your presentation yeah. on June 26. Thank, thank you, you. Tatiana. <laughs>